Welcome back to another episode of Green Life Garden and Home DIY channel. It's your girl Ro, aka Mommy Green Life. So today I am going to be canning potatoes. We had a bag of potatoes that were left over from Thanksgiving holiday and um, I could tell that they are getting to that point where they may not want to hold up too much longer. So I want to take you through um, my canning process today with me and I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. All right. So the very first thing that you're going to need is your pressure canner because potatoes is a low acid uh, food. It does need to be canned in a pressure canner versus just giving them a water bath like I would do if it were fruit or some other type of, um, what would I say, citrus. All right. Um, I am going to have my sponge here which is my loofah sponge. I grow them myself. We could take baths with them, wash dishes with them or what have you. But I keep this one on hand so um, we don't get confused if, if that is the, the, the sponge for the dishes or <laughs> for the vegetables. You know, you would just want to kind of keep everything sort of separate. I have all of my little gadgets here. Um, my funnel, my um, tongs and just everything that we're going to need to handle the, the jars like this to get them in and out of the pot when they're hot. Um, this would help you to gauge your, your water um, head space in your jars. All right. And I have my rings hanging up here um, because they can be used over and over again. Just make sure once you're done with them, they're dry and clean. I have my... Um, lids here and you know you have to use new lids every time you can because you have uh, this rubber piece in here that gets worn every time you run it through hot water you can use them but not for canning my jars back there I've got vinegar that I'm going to be cleaning the the mouth of my jars with so that I can make sure that they're cleaned and um, don't have any particles of foreign things on it that will cause my jars not to seal canning salt and if you don't use canning salt, use a good um, sea salt or you, you're going to have cloudiness in your jar. Okay, so um, whatever seasonings you're going to use, you can go ahead and get them out. I'm not real big on seasonings. I do like to do my own because I don't know what type fillers go into some of these. So keep that in mind when you're choosing. Um, I'm not representing this brand by no means. It's what I, I had. Uh, on hand so we're going to use that and um, yeah we're going to go ahead and get started you could also use uh, like I said your canning salt if you don't have the Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt is what I use so the very first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get my jars into the sink I'm going to wash all of them and I will come back and show you what I do next, not only the jars, I'm going to be washing all of my utensils and then we'll move forward. Okay. Done washing, I'm just rinsing everything. And I'm here to be prepared to put in a hot oven. I'm done with my jars. I've got them all in here ready to go into the oven at 150 degrees or your lowest setting and keep them there for about 20 minutes. I do this first so that they, while they're in the oven, uh, get more sterile, then I can go ahead and cut my potatoes or whatever it is I'm preparing. This uh, is my utensils that's been washed. Keep in mind the biggest thing with canning is just prepping, making sure that everything is clean so you're not introducing anything far in. Um, to whatever it is you're canning. I do uh, believe that the canning process itself will probably, you know, it's definitely killing off quite a bit, but 
still. Um, I heard one lady say as far as the safety of canning with botulism, botulism worrying, um, it's just, you know, something that you should not be overly concerned with, especially if you're keeping everything clean. She also made the comment that more people die from uh, medications prescribed than, than eating canned food. So um, while that's working, let me take you over to the stove. All right, so over here at the stove, you see I've got all of my water. I've got three quarts of water that is going to go into my canning pot. Okay, that is what the book said. That is what I'm doing. Um, I do keep my book on hand. <laughs> I don't care how professional you get. It's good to go back and take a look sometimes. This pot is going to be for adding additional water, uh, adding water to my jars of potatoes. And this I'm going to just put my rings and my, um, my lids in mainly to just make sure that they are uh, sterile as well. All right. So we're at 150 degrees inside the oven, and that's where I'm going to stick my jars while I'm prepping the potatoes, and uh, we're about to get busy. Oh, don't forget to put your uh, your bottom piece of your into your canner because you cannot set those jars down in there um, like this. You've got to have the bottom piece in, and I'm saying bottom piece because I'm just a little bit thrown off. I'll show it to you in just a moment. Right there. Got to have that in there. That's what your jars are going to sit and rest on. So my sink is all clean from washing everything up. The next thing going over in here is the potatoes to wash. And my loofah to give them a good scrub. Got my potatoes washed and the more I look at them, I kind of, I see some that are growing the little, uh, the leaves or the little spuds starting to stick out on them. It makes me want to plant them, but <laughs> since I've gotten everything already prepared, I'm going to go ahead and um, can them. So with these, you may see that I have uh, six quart jars. You're thinking, well, you don't need that many jars for that. I just try to make sure I have enough on hand just in case. So let's go ahead and start uh, cutting our potatoes. The only thing I'm going to be cutting off is the bad part. I'm going to leave the skin. If you choose to take yours off, that's you. I'm going to leave mine on. Okay, so I have gotten my potatoes ready. I'm just going to go ahead, got my cutting board here, and I'm going to start cutting them in half. I'm not going to do them extremely small. You cut yours according to your preference. Some people even cut theirs to, uh, for frying french fries later. So they cut them as you would a french fry. All right. And uh, like I said, if you have any bad spots, just go ahead and uh, take those out. Move anything that you don't want. And uh, put it in your bowl. Got my bowl here. Alright, so mine are about this size. But again, do them the way you want. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another one. I'm just, this one is a little bit smaller. So. You know, cut them. Depending uh, on whatever it is you're going to do with them, you could cut them for that. You might want them for potato salad. You might want them, you know, for stew. I don't know. It's just only you know that. So that's the way we cut our potatoes. My potatoes are all cut. I'm going to go ahead and put them in here into my colander. Give them another good rinse. And from this point, I'm going to be putting them in jars. All right, so I've taken my jars out. They are very, very hot because they've been sitting in the oven for about the last 30 minutes. Um, on 150, 175, somewhere in there, you can crank your oven up higher if you like. These are mason jars. They can take heat as well as they could take uh, cold and being frozen. Um, those are 
peels that I want to show you or a potato I want to show you that it just would not work. It has a lot of uh, 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 bad spots, so we're not going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and fill my jars. Make sure that when you are done cutting your potatoes, your jars are ready and your hot water that is boiling on the stove is ready to go ahead and lay it over in there. That will keep your potatoes from um, darkening. And some people do go ahead and put theirs in ascorbic acid or whatnot to keep that from happening. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep everything as fresh as possible. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start putting these potatoes into the jars. And I'm not going to uh, boil the potatoes first. I'm going to raw pack them because they have a tendency to turn to mashed potatoes. Now, if you are just on point with canning potatoes, maybe you can boil yours first. But I do not think that is a great idea for me. And, uh, and that's my business as well as yours if you don't want to do that. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started putting my potatoes in the jar. Okay, they are very hot. So, once I get them in, I'm going to lay them in my water. And I'm not going to need this many jars. I could tell that already. But I'd rather have them and not need them than to need them and have to not have them and have to try to figure out what I'm going to do. So I want to leave about an inch of head space. And you'll know you have an inch of head space by using this tool right here. Because those little steps there, they're going to let you know once you stick that here, your water should be to just touching um, the tip of it once you stick it down in there. All right. Let me go ahead and finish packing my jars and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, got all my jars filled. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and add my salt. And then I'm going to pl place my seasonings in. I, sometimes I'll put that at the bottom of the jar. Sometimes not. I've got garlic. I've got uh, onion. Make sure you use the seasonings that your family like. Um, and then the next batch of potatoes, you may not want to use the same season. It just depends on what you're using it for. So I'm going to take and put a teaspoon of salt. You put what you want according to your family liking. You could do a half a teaspoon. Salt is just for flavor, nothing else. Okay, and that's the pickling salt. And I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my seasonings. I'm using one hand here so you can see. So let me get my hands free so I can get that in the jar. Got my seasonings in, which is onion powder, garlic powder, and parsley flakes and salt. And I'm going to go ahead and start ladling in my water. And this is water out of a jug. I we do not cook with our water from the sink. So, and this is it. That bag of potatoes got us five quart jars. So, once you do that, you're gonna take your tool here and just make sure you get all the bubbles out. And you may need to add more water after you get the bubbles out because, of course, the water level is gonna go lower. Check to see if you got about a inch uh, of uh, head space and I do see it's not touching just almost so let me go ahead and finish the water in my jars and I'll show you the next step okay as you can see I've got my water in all of my jars and I've went through and I've debubbled them to make sure that they're actually um, have the amount of water that they're supposed to have in them because a lot of times when you go back and debubble you'll see that you you may have to add more water okay it's important to have the amount of water in the jars and to get those bubbles out of there fill in all those cracks and spaces the next thing i'm going to do is go ahead and clean the rim of my jars with this vinegar right here i just got a little paper towel here i'm going to dampen it this is a very important step once you have checked the rims of these jars to make sure there are no cracks um, or anything that will keep it from properly sealing 
you go ahead and you wipe those jars uh, with your vinegar or whatever it is you're using and um, once you get that done you're ready to go ahead and put your uh, your lids on and then your rings wiping your jars make sure everything is clean and uh, that those seals would do their job and seal all right let me get that done I've got all of my rims wiped with vinegar and we're on the home stretch now all I'm doing is get my lids out they were sitting in a nice little warm bath I'm gonna put them on all I'm doing now is continuing to put my rings on and they are finger tight don't need you to go get the wrench out the garage to try to put these on okay use the strength in your hand So this is what we got so far. We're going to go ahead and get them in our pot. And I actually had my canning pot on too for, uh, for a little bit here. Just on a very, very little low um, setting. Everything is still hot and warm. So, all right. Here we go. We're about to put them over into our canning pot. And... The vinegar I'm going to take and pour in there because that's going to help keep our canning pot uh, clean as well as our jars. Okay, so don't forget to do that. Save that. Don't throw it out. Okay, I've got all of my jars sitting down in there. I ended up with five quarts. That's more than what I had. So let's go ahead and get our top on. You would probably notice on your um, canner that you're going to just have to follow the directions as to how to... Get your lid on easily and fit it. This has arrows, and it's an arrow on my top, too, on the lid. That will show me how to line it up and go ahead and lock everything down in place. And uh, that's it. Let me go ahead and get that lid on, and we'll talk about a few other things. Okay, here's my lid. I've already greased my ring on the inside of my lid. I've already looked through to make sure I could see clear through the holes of my lid and um, I use the, the ring that keeps it pliable that black ring it plop it, it comes out easy goes back in easy all right the water like I said you could already kind of have it hot I did the book says that you can and uh, if you're hot packing and which is what I did I kept everything hot the whole process so I turned my pot on and I kept it a little bit hot as well so I'm going to go ahead and get this locked down because I did everything I needed to do to the lid. Definitely on the home stretch. What I have did at this point is went ahead and put my lid on. I've got my, my heat cranked up to uh, medium to a high heat. And I'm going to let that go until it gets at 10 to uh, 11 pounds of pressure for canning potatoes. Now, um, 10 pounds of pressure is, is like what you really wanting to go for in an altitude of less than 2,000. Check your altitude in the area that you're in when you're using pressure canners to see what type, what how many pounds of pressure you need to be canning at. The biggest thing is not to let it drop below that, that uh, 10 pounds of pressure. And uh, like I said, for the, the potatoes, the book said 11 pounds. So I'm going to try to keep it right there. And um, I'll adjust my heat accordingly. Uh, now, I will not put my weight on this nipple until this begin to uh, gush out steam. And I'm going to let that steam for about 10 minutes before I put that weight on. And then we'll um, also see this nipple rise. And that nipple won't fall until I turn this pot, pot off after the processing time of 40 minutes for quart jars. And then um, it, will, it will fall once I turn the heat off and uh, let the pot depressurize itself okay okay so my pot has been going for about 20 minutes now and it's just beginning to release steam I'm gonna let that steam continue to release uh, full force 
for 10 minutes and then I'm going to put my weight on. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. You can see the steam is still coming out. I'm going to go ahead and take my weight right here and put it on. All right, you should see this come up in just a moment because it's starting to uh, build up pressure in there and we'll adjust our heat from there. Uh, uh, remember, 11 pounds for the potatoes, 10, um, you know, you don't want to fall below that. All right, there's our nipple just came up. you can see we have came up to a, a little over 10 pounds of pressure and I'm maintaining that pressure right now at almost a medium high heat on this electric stove on this particular on this particular eye so all of those things matter um, just watch it make sure you maintain that that level of pressure and um, if it should go higher than that adjust your heat uh, by turning it down and the pressure should come down as well Okay, you'll notice that my uh, pressure is trying to get a little bit above 11. I'm just going to continue to adjust my heat. Uh, once it gets past the 10 pounds or 11 pounds, whatever, wherever you're supposed to have it pressure-wise, that's when you start your timer. Okay, so we are at exactly 11 pounds of pressure. It was up there for a minute, around 11 or 12. Listen, I watched this pot like it's an armor truck. From the start to finish, um, you know, I try to prep if I'm going to be doing something. It's going to take a little while. If I get my glad, my jars washed and uh, everything washed up and ready. But when I actually pack those jars and get them put into this, this can of baby. Oh, I'm going to wash this like a hawk. So um, we can make sure we're not going below our pressure um, or we don't want to be too high above it either so i advise you to do the same just go ahead and i just allow myself a good two hours to say i know i'm gonna be in the kitchen all right so i get my mind right for that and uh get on up in here and do what i got to do make sure i can feed my family all right so my uh timer is done as you can see the pressure has came down to uh, five pounds i'm going to continue to let it depressurize i'm sorry i didn't catch it right at the top so you could watch it drop but my mom called and that's just not that person that you tell um you need to get off the phone because you're doing something <laughs> at least not her children anyway um we're gonna go ahead and let this pressure fall and i'm gonna let it sit until it um this nipple drops right here and once that drops, I know that it will be pretty safe to uh, go ahead, remove my weight, and uh, take the lid off. All right, I can't wait to do the great reveal. See you in a moment. Okay, so you can see the nipple has dropped. I'm going to go ahead and remove, gently remove this weight. There's no more steam coming out of there. And uh, you can give it another minute or two just until it gets to a place where you feel safe to remove your lid. Remember to always... When you remove your lid, you're going to turn it back towards you so the steam could go that way and you won't burn yourself, okay? So we are done. I have taken my lid off. I'm going to pick a jar up here for you to see it. Let me get it closer and uh, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Get in a better location here. Okay, I've got one out. You can see that it's still boiling, still cooking in there. This is one of the reasons I say I don't think I would want to cook my potatoes before I actually can them. But that is absolutely beautiful. And um, it smells so good in here, y'all. And you would think that you should be able to smell food while you're canning. But remember, you only put these lids on finger tight. And uh, the pressure that is in that pot, it could force things in as well as stuff out. So, yeah. Let me go ahead and finish taking my jars out. I'm going to, I'll just prop you guys up right here. And I'll finish taking my jars out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab another jar. You can probably see that bubbling. There is one.
canning is so easy. Don't let people scare you away from it. This is the part I really love. I don't know what it is about watching these jars bubbling and cooking. <laughs> don't forget to leave your lids on, or shall I say your rings? You want to leave your rings on? I leave mine on for at least uh, until the next day. Uh, some people will tell you different times and hours. Go by your manual, go by people that has been doing it for a long time, and you can't go wrong with that. But I do take mine off because you don't want to leave them on. You don't want to get what we call a false seal, thinking that your jars have sealed and they haven't. The way you will tell that, you're probably going to start here on pinging, which is sealing, and you will know because this, you won't be able to um, hear it um, once you touch it. I shouldn't have probably touched that, but yeah, they'll start sealing themselves and once that little middle piece go down you will know that they are ready i could tell that none of these have sealed because i could see you can see just that little rising right there on all of them and they will start to seal um throughout the the day and then you know i'll take my rings off hang them back up there wash them when they're ready to be used again and uh, make sure you're always changing out your lids, this part, okay? All right. Okay, so that is it. We have went over everything that I could think of. I'm sure that I have covered all you need to get started. Um, yeah, do take, take a look at other videos and check out the rest of my channel uh, playlist. And um, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. One love.